Welcome back to 9.2, where we're diving deeper into mitosis and the cell cycle. So biology loves cycles. Biology loves circles. So mitosis is going to be no different. Now, even though we call cell division mitosis, it's really only one stage of the full cell cycle. Um, and so make sure you're very aware that if we're talking about cell cycle, we're talking about all of the cell's life. If we're talking about mitosis, we're just talking about cell division. So on average, a cell spends about a day or 24 hours in interphase uh, or the growing and eating and living stage. And it spends about 20 minutes in mitosis. So most of a cell's life will take place in interphase. Um, so in this cell cycle, we have multiple stages, G1, S and G2, which are all part of interphase. And then we have the M phase for mitosis. Now, mitosis is characterized by several stages, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Now, let's break down what these all are. So our cell cycle has a few different stages. G1, which is short for gap one, is our growing phase. Uh, the cell is doing its basic cell stuff. It's growing, it's getting bigger as it processes nutrients. Um, and this is where um, a lot of life is going to be spent. Then it's going to roll into the S phase when it gets big enough that it decides it's there's enough resources, I'm big enough, it's time to divide. The S phase stands for synthesis, which is where DNA replication happens. So all of those chromosomes are going to get duplicated. After that, we're in G2. This is kind of quality control, where the cell will grow a little bit, uh, but mostly it's making sure that synthesis happened well and that the uh, conditions are right to enter cell division. Then we enter mitosis, where we'll split into two new daughter cells that will both be in G1. Now, there's also the possibility that a cell decides, I don't want to divide. Uh, maybe it's too crowded, maybe there aren't enough resources to sustain more cells, and so it can enter into a phase called G0. This is a holding st uh, stasis. Um, the cell is not going to grow, it's just going to stay put, keep living its life, and if conditions change where it's time to divide, there's more room, there's more resources, it can go back into G1 to go through the cell cycle. So, in mitosis, we're going to be really interested in watching something called spindle fibers. So spindle fibers are going to be what attach to our chromosomes to actually pull them apart to make sure that we get an identical amount of DNA in each cell. It's really important that this process is very organized so that you end up with two cells that are identical and have the exact same DNA. If you start to lose DNA, you're going to lose important proteins, and then the cell's not going to be able to function, and it's going to die. So this process is incredibly important. These spindle fibers are made up of microtubules from our cytoskeleton. Uh, they're formed in little organelles called centrosomes, um, and they're going to aid in this cell separation. Attached to the centrosome of our chromosome, remember that little pin that holds the two uh, sister chromatids together is a protein called a kinetochore, which is what's going to actually attach to those microtubules. So the stages of mitosis, you can go watch a better YouTube video uh, than I have, but I have some little tips and tricks to remember what happens. So in prophase, our uh, cell membrane is going to start to break down and chromosomes are going to condense. So that chromatin is going to form into chromosomes. And you can see those centri centrosomes are starting to build the spindle fiber out of microtubules. Then we have a little intermediate phase called prometaphase. And that's where the spindle fibers are going to stretch all the way across the cell and start to attach to our chromosomes, to their kinetochores. In metaphase, the chromosomes meet in the middle in metaphase where they get lined up in a row. This is our quality control check to make sure that everything is attached and that each cell is going to end up with the same amount of DNA. In anaphase, those microtubules start to contract. So they're going to start to pull those chromosomes apart. And those sister chromatids are going to break apart at the centrosome. 
uh, or sorry, the centromere, and that those are going to start to get pulled away. In telophase, all the cell components are getting tugged apart, and we're starting to form new uh, two new cells. And then in cytokinesis, uh, the cleavage happens where those two cells are going to fully pinch apart and become two completely independent cells. So my little tricks, we prepare to divide in prophase. You pull the spindle in prometaphase. We meet in the middle at metaphase. Anaphase is the away phase. The cells get tugged apart in telophase. And you have complete cells in cytokinesis. So that a uh, little bit of alliteration always helps me remember things. If it doesn't help you remember them, well then, best of luck finding a better solution. So as a reminder, mitosis is only happening in our somatic cells, and it's going to produce two genetically identical daughter cells. So as we watch here in this little animation, those homologous chromosomes get replicated. In prophase, the uh, form chromosomes, we meet in the middle in metaphase. Those spindle fibers are going to contract to pull apart the chromosomes in anaphase. In telophase, we're going to start to have two new uh, cells form with the nuclei. And then in cytokinesis, we have that cleavage event. What about plant cells? Uh, they're not going to be as flexible because they have a cell wall, right? Well, it's the exact same thing. We see our prophase and our pre-metaphase, metaphase. We see anaphase, but because that cell wall is pretty rigid, you're not going to see the uh, elaborate stretching that you see in animal cells because they only have a membrane. However, in that telophase and cytokinesis, you're going to see something called a cell plate start to form, and that is going to be indicative of the new cell wall that's going to separate these two plant cells. Later on, we'll look under a microscope and you'll be able to see all these cells stages. How are bacteria doing it? They're not uh, eukaryotes. Well, if you remember, prokaryotes have one giant chromosome. That's a big circle. And what's cool about uh, bacteria is that they do replication and division at the same time. Uh, so this is called binary fission. Binary, meaning we're going to result in two. Um, and so there is no S phase where they're going to do their complete replication and then start dividing. The dividing process is going to happen at the same time as the replication process. Uh, this can allow for potentially more errors as there's less quality control checks. However, that also allows bacteria to stay uh, nimble and evolve through mutations because they don't have uh, the sexual reproduction that animals have. All right, see you next time for 9.3.